Does your website need more traffic? Well, visit overflowcafe.com today. They make websites popular and over 41,000 people use their service to gain more customers. They are winning our business. What about you? Visit overflowcafe.com today. Hi, this is your girl T with Rockefeller's Barbershop located at 1733 Babcock in San Antonio, Texas. Whether you're looking for a haircut, a shave, braids, dreads, weaves, color, we do it all here at Rockefeller's. You can hit me up at 210-884-9046. That's for call or text. And on Facebook and Instagram at Takesha Williams. That's T A K E S H I A Williams. And you're listening to us now on I Am Refocused podcast on iHeartRadio. You are listening to I Am Refocused podcast with your host, Shamaya Reed. This podcast is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. Now, let's tune in into today's podcast. This is I Am Refocus Podcast. And today, guys, we are back, back, back on Thursdays. You know what time it is. We're here at the Barbershop Rico Rodriguez Rockefellers. So before we get into today's show, I want to thank all of our sponsors real quick. Miss Kim, River City Donuts here in San Antonio, Texas. And Bay Bay McClinton, All Sports Speed and Conditioning. You can go visit his website, allsportsfitness.net. And also, D.W. Brooks Funeral Home. Big shout out to them. And I want to give a special shout out to beyondbeanie.com. They're an awesome uh, company that makes beanies and bracelets. And 10% of all profits go to kids in need. So make sure you go there. And if you want to get some stuff there, you can use a special code to get 25% off. Just put READ25 when we go check out. And to, R-E-E-D? Yes, R-E-E-D, READ25, and you get 25% off on all purchase items. And today we have someone back in the house, Mr. Braden Watson. How are you doing today? Yo, 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 I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me back. I'm excited to be here. So, since last time we talked, you've been doing some things, man. You've been doing <laughs> some really cool stuff. Tell us what's been happening. Man, well, I... It's been it's been crazy on on our end. Um, I'm I'm dropping an EP finally, so that's finally happening next Tuesday, mm-hmm. March 20th. Pre-orders are already going down, so go get your pre-order. Go order this album. It's 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 nuts already. Um, a lot of people don't know this though, um, but I'm doing two chapters of of e- dropping EPs for my full album. Mm-hmm. So the the March 20th drop happens for the ep for the difference then later this year i'm going to drop another ep and then the beginning of next year i'll be dropping the full record um so there's been a lot going on we've been we've been real busy i've been real busy um traveling and and especially writing and recording you know on top of all of that has been it's been nuts I mean, I see your stuff on the Facebook feeds, like, oh, he's at the airport, and yeah. he's in the studio. And yeah. You've been doing some more Facebook Live, too, I've been seeing. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to stay on it. I've mm-hmm. been trying to stay on it. I'm I'm not a pro like you, you no, know what no, I mean? Because no. y'all, every Thursday, every Thursday, 10 o'clock, I can, I can like, set my dial, and I know it's going to happen. That's awesome. So, yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to get better at the, the Facebook Live thing, so. And you also been on the Satellite Radio. Tell us a little bit about that because the Kirk Franklin show or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've been on, you know, Kirk Franklin's Praise um, for a while now, a little over mm-hmm. a year now. Um, and then also, you know, because of that, a lot of AM and FM radio stations started, you know, hearing the project, hearing my music, and they're like, "Man, we need to have that." And mm-hmm. so, since the last time, you know, I was here. Um, the mu- my my songs my music is blowing up everywhere. Um, so they're they're playing it over in Europe. They're playing it over in Africa. They're playing it over in South America. Wow. Um, and it's just been you know they request it. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, can we get the music? Hey, can we get the music? And we're just like, yeah, absolutely. You know. Wow. And um, what's cool about it is one thing kind of leads to another. So like one station gets it, they start playing it. Other people hear it, and then other stations want it. And so. 
um, because of the satellite radio, um, the, the FM and the AM thing, you know, really popped off um, for the FM and AM dials. And how did that process start when you were able to get on satellite? Like, was it just a networking thing or someone reached out to you personally and said, yeah. hey? Um, it was kind of both mm-hmm. at, that, at that time. Um, mm-hmm. It was, you know, I, I had a relationship and then, um, you know, we kind of just was like, we decided, yeah, you know, I think this is the route we want to go as far as um, playing my music on, on, on a radio station. Mm-hmm. You know, we felt like, well, our reach would be better starting off on satellite um, than trying to do, you know, a mom and pop station um, and trying to market that. But because of um, the name, you know, of the satellite radio of mm-hmm. Sirius XM and it's Kirk Franklin's praise, mm-hmm. um, people w- wanted the music. And so um, all the mom and pop stations were like, man, we need to have that. But they're the reasons yeah. why it all blew up because, you know, they're playing it in their area multiple times a day. That's awesome. You know it's South by Southwest season. I do know that, and yeah. And you have some awesome opportunities up, you know, soon in the future. You're going to be doing some events. Where? Yeah. Um, well, I didn't, ma- I didn't make it out this year to mm-hmm. South by Southwest only because next week is Stellar Awards week. Mm-hmm. And so um, I came down with allergies oh, man. <laughs> this past monday yeah. um and i was supposed to do a show um and i just i i can't do it i can barely talk right now but you know i serve a faithful god <laughs> <laughs> let the church say amen, amen. Let, amen. let the church say amen. <laughs> amen so um we we felt that it would be good for me to to rest this week yeah um so that because i fly out wednesday and mm-hmm. then i'll be out there till monday oh, and yeah. so i have um, three performances, three shows, and then I'm leading worship at uh, the Champion Center in Las Vegas out wow. there um, on Sunday. And so I'm leading worship for three of their services. So I have got to... Uh, you need some power. Yeah, you. yeah. So um, we didn't make it out to South by Southwest this, this year, but, you know, it's on our radar for next year. I have yet to do one. Mm, oh, wow. okay. So... Um, it's always because it falls in a weird time for us. You need to throw a party, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a venue and yeah. have a Brandon Watson part, t-shirt party. I think, yeah, <laughs> maybe, man. You know, that that would be something to look... I mean, I would be down, you know, to, mm-hmm. to throw something. I know we could pool people, you oh, know what yeah. I mean? Um, but I just we just haven't really done anything because it, it falls on a weird time frame for our travel True. schedule. Mm-hmm. For us on our end, but um, you know we're gonna have to make plans to be there next year. And the Stellar Wars event is is a third party event that you're gonna be performing at as well, right? No, actually, it's gonna be um, it's the official Stellar Awards um, Indie Artist Showcase. Oh, okay. So the Stellar Awards are actually putting that show on. Okay. Um, that's Thursday night that I'll be out there, um, and then you know if you win you. Uh, open up on main stage for pre-show, which will be mm. Friday morning, um, and then I'll be f- at f- um, another show Friday night for uh, the third annual Gospel Artist Entertainment That's um, awesome. concert with Aldrin McClure. Mm-hmm. So he he's having me out, and um, there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of people on on, on the lineup um, for that show. I think um, let me let me I think let me just pull. Pull, oh, yeah. pull up some names here. And while you're looking um, for that, um, have you met some new artist friends in the industry since you've been blowing up crazy lately? I, I, I have, yeah. Um, you know, I've I've definitely connected and made relationships with um, you know some names in the mm-hmm. industry, and and it's kind of been like it's not been like a oh hi, I'm Brandon. Nice to meet you. It, it was never like I'm putting myself out there. Mm-hmm. It's you know you're on the same lineup on a lot of these events, yeah. Um, and then you're you're just you know hanging out in the green room or whatever, and they're there, and it's just hey, how it's are you? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And then you just hit it off, and then you exchange info, and then you stay friends, you know. Um, and then there's some people that. Y- you just don't. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't vibe that. with. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> and that that, that happens. happens a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, it's just kind of like, well, we're all in this together, you yeah, know. Hopefully. And hopefully, you yeah. just you just never know. Um, 
But yeah, man, you know, I've been blessed to to connect with some 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 good people out there. So And how how has things changed, if any, as far as you know, you're getting more attention now, you're doing more major events and you're being seen a lot more. Has anything changed or pretty much kept the same? Um, I mean as far as a lot of things have changed, but then at the same time, a lot of things haven't changed. Um, I am under new management, um, so I, I had a renew in December, which was a whole huge deal, mm-hmm. um, and I I just didn't see fit to uh, to sign resign with who I was with. Yeah. You know, they were they were going to want to promise me the world and everything, but it never happened in two years of me being with them. Yeah. So um, I did I didn't sign with them. And um, so I'm up. I'm up for grabs right now. Mm. Um, but the reason why I say that is, oh, I mean, we're in discussions with like three or four um, management agencies, okay. and so um, I just haven't decided which way I want to go yet. And like how hard is that? You know? it, it's it's because that's a different yeah, game right there. It's a it's nerve wracking, yeah. and um, I I wouldn't say scary, but you know, it's definitely something that. You, you need God's wisdom and guidance on um, because you, it, you, you're basically wrapping up your life for a year to two years with, you know, people yeah, that people, yeah. that um, you want. I, you know, I want them to have my best interests in mm-hmm. mind um, when we're, you know, signing for deals or signing for a, a project or signing for, you know, events. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's nerve wracking, you know. So I'm I'm in that moment right now of figuring out which way I want to go. Um, but you know, it's it's still cool because I'm still enjoying it. I'm still enjoying the process because um, I remember when no one was talking to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember when when it was just I was hoping, wishing, and praying that like, oh man, God, I just I need to be signed, and mm-hmm. you know. So it's a cool it's cool to be on the other side of it and have options you know so um but you know it's go, go, going back to your question um you know uh, there's i think things have changed only because of um people know me now so it's kind of like san antonio small world yeah 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 san antonio and then you know on east coast side too you know when we go out there um people actually you know listen the, the gospel stations over there are a dime a dozen like San Antonio, we don't have anything. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just it's just kind of like a CCM deal, and which is yeah. not bad at all. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm C- I am CCM. I technically am CCM, mm-hmm. um, but a lot of gospel stations play my stuff, and so you know, going over to the East Coast, people know me, and it's just kind of like, wow, okay, cool, like <laughs> <That's> cool. <laughs> sure, I'll sign your shirt, you know, or your shoe, or whatever you want me to sign. <laughs> And uh, but it's still me at the end of the day, and you know we're we're still us, and we're still humble, humble guys. And you know, if you catch me at a coffee shop, I'm gonna be like, hey, pull up a seat, let's you know, let's hang out. <laughs> and how has friends and family reacted to your recent success? Um, the funny thing is, I mean, my my closest friends, you know, I've always had uh, a handful of close friends, and that has never changed. You know, they're they're always there they've always been there mm-hmm. um they always still keep me a goofball and you know and basically not believing the hype of my own yeah. <laughs> self <laughs> because they're just like dude keep you're you still you you know what i mean just because this has happened or whatever mm-hmm. um so you know that that's been really cool having having support of you know close friends um and family you know to <laughs> I will always be, you know, my parents' son. You know, I'm the only child. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if we talked about that last time. Um, But, yeah, you know, I don't have siblings. And so Mm -hmm. that that also played, um, which we can talk about later, you know, it's played a huge part in my upbringing of of being a a pastor's son, uh, becoming a worship leader, and then becoming an artist, you know. Mm -hmm. So them seeing the progression... um, um, of of me has you know they've it's been something for them to be you know really proud of um, as far as my parents are you know concerned and everything and you know I have a lot of accountability around me you know so I don't I don't believe the hype of yeah I, <laughs> what you know radio stations or anything says <laughs> and touch on that <clears throat> have you always envisioned all of this happening right now 
or what has anything surprised you at all? Or um, not really. There are moments where I I do I still get surprised um, because it it has been a grind, you know. Um, especially, you know, I have not been signed to a label yet. Um, that that's, you know, obviously I've wanted to um, work and grind and, and have as much. Um, to offer a label as possible to where I'm not basically selling my soul um, yeah. to a label, um, but it's on my terms. So, you know, um, me growing up and, and having no siblings and, and being an only child, going to a small church in a small town, um, but having a dream to become this, mm-hmm. you know, I've always known that this is what I wanted to do. I've never, I never had a plan, but I knew that this is what God has called me to do. And he would, he would speak to me about it through other people all the time. And so, um, you know, navigating through, through church and navigating through church people, I would say, (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. and the hurt of, of that and what comes along with that. Um, I always found myself, you know, going back to, who King David was and the heart of David and going in Psalms growing up and um, grabbing guitar and, you know, just playing guitar and just worshiping to the Lord and, and whatever came out of that came out of that. And so now, you know, at 27 and being in the industry, you know, seven years, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, I, I saw the handprints and of God through throughout my life setting me up for this moment. Yeah. Um, but what he wanted to get through to me first was through the loneliness of not having friends and being the only child not having siblings going back to the heart of David and how David did this David was always called to be king but he had to play his harp in a pasture for sheep only for God Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what what God was doing with me I was always playing my guitar and worshipping on my own even though David was called to to be a warrior and then to sit on a throne and to rule a nation. But he first had to start it in a pasture with no one. And so that's exactly how I've related my life to to King David and um, and really, you know, honed in on who I am at the core as a worshiper, you know, before uh, artistry and before creativity, you know, I always be a worshiper. That's awesome. Now, speak on that a little bit more when you were talking about pretty much starting in humble beginnings. Yeah. But mm-hmm. not like the Bible kind of says, don't despise small beginnings. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. Speeding up to today, and you're doing all these great things. You're being able to have the opportunity to speak for new management and right. to be at the Stella Awards. You know, there's a lot of gospel singers out there yeah. that's going to be at South by Southwest. Mm-hmm. What will you tell them as far as... You know, hey, what can we do to actually have those opportunities that you're having? Um, you know, it, definitely don't don't despise where you start. Um, and I think it's it's easier said than done. Yeah. Because of that, because the the grind is so hard, and and working, putting your hands to the plow. Um, and not giving up and not failing. If that doesn't take you out, your own self will take you out because you'll start either believing the hype of yourself or you'll start basically um, giving in to, well, I hate my past because my past, you know, da da da. And you start kind of playing the uh, woe is me thing mm-hmm. <laughs> too, um, especially if things aren't happening as fast as, as fast as you think they should, you know, be happening for you. Um, but you have to just keep going back to the promises of God are true. If yeah. God has promised you something, and if God has promised you this life, then God doesn't lie, so it has to it has to come to pass. So then the rest is on me to mm-hmm. keep working until this thing happens or this thing pops off. And yes, you're going to fail, but through the failure, you have to learn. Okay, well that didn't work. So I need to try something different. Yeah. Um, it's better to say, okay, that didn't work, then that will never work. Because that will never work, you're, you're too afraid to even try. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'll, you'll never know what, what the result's going to be. And so, you know, I've had a ton of failure. You know, I've, I've had, you know, a ton of things that 
didn't go the way I thought it was going to go or, you know, I thought I would be, you know, signed to a label by now or I thought, you know, this or that and um, it hasn't happened. But because it hasn't happened, I've been set up for bigger success, you know, mm-hmm. and, and when I say success, I mean success in in the kingdom of God and success, you know, physically, you know, and um, I'm grateful for it. You know, I'm grateful for, for the timeline that I've had and, um, you know, for those that are, are still in this game or just starting, you know, it's, it's enjoy the, enjoy all of it, you know, enjoy the process of it because you're only going to get this one time, you know what I mean? You're only going to get this, um, the launch of your career, the launch of, you know, your business that one time. And if you don't enjoy it, if you're too stressed, man, you know, it's anything you try is going to right. fail. Exactly. Yeah. From the very start, you're all thinking about negative situations that's going to exactly. happen. Exactly. But yeah. you don't realize every successful person has negative situations. It's just going to come. Mm-hmm. You just got to yeah. be ready for it. Right. And prepare yourself mentally and say, okay, if this deal falls through, well, hey, I mean, come on, you're going to Stellar Wars, man. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. many artists are saying that they're going to Stellar Wars? There's not a lot of you artists, know? man. Yeah. And that, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, the, there's uh, <laughs> there's um, there's things that, you know, I've been given in, and have been offered um, that not a lot of artists have, have gotten that opportunity. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you have to make the best decision out of the cards that you're dealt with. And um, some artists and some worship dudes, they don't even get those cards. You know what I mean? Like, that's never an option for Satellite them. Satellite radio. Right. Satellite radio, yeah. you know, stellar awards, you know, touring, traveling, um, radio, period. You know, there's there's some guys out there that are, you know, they come up to me and they're like, dude, how do I do? How do I get on radio? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and it's just, it's, it's a blessing at the end of the day. But a lot of it is, it's hard work. It's what it comes back down to is, it's hard work. Actually, yesterday, um, I, I was gra- I'm grabbing coffee, of course. You know, that's my thing. So I was getting coffee, and I ran into um, a, a worship leader friend of mine who, who's pretty well known. And he was, he was in town. It was, it was so random. I walk into the Starbucks, and the dude was there. And I was like, what? What are you doing here in San Antonio, for one? And then me running into you, for two. That's crazy. Mm. And so we sat down, and we were talking for a good while. And we were talking about just kind of like this, this generation of, of musicians that are coming up, the younger guys, um, and kind of seeing that they're, like their skill level of what they're doing is just not there. And I think a lot of it's because like my generation, the generation before me, um, their passion was what drove them to get where they are and where they're going. Um, but the generation after me, like the millennial generation, I feel like they're so um, tied up in like playing video games or, you know, doing something else other than I'm going to pick up and practice my, my craft or practice my instrument. And so, I, you know, I, I talked to him yesterday and I was like, at what point um, in your career or, you know, in, in playing music, did you feel like, OK, I could listen to a song going anywhere and then by the time I got to the venue I could play the song you know what I mean because that's that's kind of a different level of of musicianship you know what I mean because you have to you have to you have to be playing for a while to like hear a song Mm -hmm. and say okay you know I know I know where that's going um he's like dude it was probably like you know five or six years before I was that solid you know to hear something and then you know play it and so um, he was like, you know, I always tell everybody, you know, everyone wants to ask me, like, how did you get where you are? And he's like, practice. <laughs> and yeah, so <clears throat> yeah. that's that's just kind of, you know, people don't want to practice. <laughs> they, <laughs> that's they, really they what wanna, it comes back down to. They want to drink some Space Jam and, water right. and turn Michael Jordan. That's well, that's <laughs> what they want. And I wish I could have that, man, but that's not how life they, works. They want to put the shoes on and then yeah. play like them. Just like, right off the do bat. some layups, man, you know, shoot some free throws. <clears throat> But that that is so true because a lot of times too, we can get success, and success needs to be defined by the individual. It cannot be what you see in Jay Z, DJ Khaled, or 
you know, Kurt Franklin, it has to be your success. Because what happens is we start comparing what we have on our plate to right. everybody else's plate. Right. But you don't know what chapter they're on. They can be on chapter 300 and you're on chapter 3. Right. Yeah. Hey, that's that's drop the mic. I'm the man, man. I, I can I can be that. done with this interview just with that. <laughs> what am I doing here for? <laughs> wow. But no, because I say that because once again, you ever since the last time we talked, you have definitely done some pretty awesome stuff, and it's just a journey. It's not the end. It's really the beginning. Right. Because when we train ourselves to think a certain way and to do certain things yeah. and keep our faith as the core. Right. You know, now everything seems to be more balanced. Yeah. Touch on that. How, how does faith play a role with you enjoying this journey as an artist? Um, you know, I think for for me, um, because it's it's hard, man. You know, it's hard to to um kind of go back to what what the basics are and remember to keep doing that you know even for me i think m- me as a worship leader you know I, I i talked about who i always will be as a worshiper um that's been hard to to get up on a platform and you know be in a service and yes i'm leading worship Yes, I'm in a service and I'm singing to, you know, leading a congregation to in worship. But in my heart, am I really worshiping God or am I just going through the motions, the motions and doing it for a paycheck? Because I'm Brandon Watson <laughs> and I'm supposed to be there yeah. and that's what I'm brought in to do. You know what I mean? And so I've even caught myself several times where I'm just up there and I'm just doing this. I'm just doing this thing. And it's not because I'm hurt, and it's not because oh someone offended me, and this is the reason why. Mm. It's literally just been because I haven't been diligent with relationship with Jesus mm. for me. Mm. You know what I mean? This is not like at all a sin thing. This is not all like oh, yeah, yeah. it's just it's mm. just life. You mm. know what I mean? And I have to keep reminding myself. I have to keep going back to God. I worship you because you are my God. I worship you because I have seen you done miracles for me. I have seen you done miracles for my family. That's why I worship you. I don't worship you because I'm Brandon Watson and I need a check from this church. Or I worship you because this. I simply worship you because of who you are and uh, and you are my king. That's it, period. And so I have to keep going back to that weekly. every Every weekend, every time... I, I'm scheduled to lead worship. That's what I have to remind myself. Hey, I'm going out on this platform to to lead worship for the audience of one, mm-hmm. not for 3,000 people. 3,000 people are going on the journey with me mm-hmm. to worship the audience of That's one. That's good. You know, and I have to keep reminding myself of that. That's I can't do a cliche thing anymore. Nobody's going to remember a one-liner that I give during a worship set but what they are going to remember is them having an encounter with with jesus through through my worship you know and um it's it's not something that i'm like oh my worship's so special and you're just going to be blessed by it you know no it's just it's an open prayer closet basically is what it is you know and uh you're welcome to come <laughs> that's that's basically how it goes you're welcome to come I like how you said about the journey. The 3,000, is they're joining me on the journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good because no matter what field you are, music, entrepreneur, whatever, that should be your focus, letting people to join you with your journey, with what you're doing with your gifts and talents. Yeah. Because if it's the other way around, and it's like, you need to thank me for even showing up. Right. That's the fastest track for having hiccups, a.k.a. bumps right. in the road. Right, right. I mean, listen, you know, it's easy to do that only because of being burned a lot. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, could, I could give you so many stories of so many times that I've traveled across the United States, like, multiple times. I mean, this isn't just one time. Got the truck, you know, grill. Right, man. You know, we, we fly out. We You know, we're, we go through the whole process of everything. And we get there, and six people show up. 
Ooh. When they told yeah. us 600 is, you know, 1,200 people are going to, you know, estimated to be there. And we're like, what? Okay. So we get there and we're like, well, when is this thing going to start? You know, I mean, this is, multi- dude, this is not just one time. Like, yeah. this has happened multiple times. You know, and and still ministering as those, there's 6,000 in, in the audience. Mm-hmm. And then when you get done, you like, we didn't, even, I didn't even get a check. Like, I didn't even get paid to mm-hmm. do it. Like, you know, there's been, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, that's not, it's, it's testing who I am. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. testing who the team is. Um, and it's testing how I'm going to react to that. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's on them if they want (laughs) to, you know, cheat me out or whatever, whatever else that's on you, you know, um, and you got to take that up with God. But, you know, at the end of the day, I know where my heart is and I know, that I'm still going to give out the same way as if though you know there's a thousand people or one person in there um, because again it's for the audience of one mm-hmm. and that's the key because anybody who does anything with a passion if it's really your passion sometimes you don't need to be paid right exactly because yeah. when you're working something you like doing it ain't work it ain't work right and eventually like you were saying with your mindset of you know well I'm doing this for God I'm not doing this for so and so yeah what happens is stellar words start coming. <laughs> right. Satellite like radio start coming. Right, right, right. And we're going to speak in existence. A label is going to start coming. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You know, those opportunities start coming for you because you're not allowing outside circumstances dictate what's really supposed to be happening in sure. your personal life. Yeah. And that is a hard balance. How do you, I mean, I know you talk about faith and everything, but how do you on a daily basis keep yourself balance because there's times where you just want i ain't got here but you want to pull your hair out like man what's going on <laughs> you know yeah listen what's that's, your tips man? that's real right there that you you do want to pull your hair out and um I, I think it's i know i know when i'm not where i need to be you mm-hmm. know as far as my relationship with with god and this is where basically where it's at when you're married or you're in a relationship with with a guy with a girl, hopefully it's the right yeah, way. You know, you know, right. you know. What I'm saying <laughs> what the Bible says. But anyways, um, you you can't just go out about your day and not speak to the person that you're with at all. There's gonna be yeah. some form if you keep doing that every single day. I'm, you know, we're not gonna talk or we're gonna periodically talk. We're not gonna really see each other, whatever. But you're still you're working. You're this. You're that. You're working. Um, you're gonna eventually feel some repercussions of that mm-hmm. in in that relationship, um, and again, you don't have to be out, you know, cheating on your wife or cheating on your husband, but just simple not communicating. Mm-hmm. You're, there's gonna be some repercussions from that, and th- it, that goes back to your relationship with Jesus and your relationship with God. Like it's if I'm not gonna talk to God today or tomorrow or. You know, pretty soon it's Monday, and I'm like, oh, it's my day off. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> By Friday, if I haven't done anything, I'm going to be like, oh, shoot. Like, God, I'm my bad. You know, I'm sorry. Like, this is, like, I feel bad. I feel bad. And I'm like, you know, hey, I'm going to stop everything and, and, you know, read a couple scriptures and put some worship music on and just be like, hey, God, you know, you're good <laughs> and just start the conversation you know what i mean that's mm-hmm. all it that's all it takes is starting the conversation of of just saying like hey god this is this is what i'm going through today you know you see it and you know i worship you i bless you I, and just start worshiping and loving on him and, and you immediately feel the presence mm-hmm. of god and that's the truth as far as <clears throat> making time because you also starting to make time for priorities. Mm-hmm. And you know where your priorities are based on where you spend your time. Right. So that's something that these artists can really start writing their notes. Like, hey, where do I put most of my time at? Right. Yeah. Where are my priorities? Is, is my priorities trying to be famous or are my priorities trying to be effective? Right. Because mm. this is big. Again, <laughs> you better drop that mic, sir. Is, is That a, today. Shoot. You just got nuggets today. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's a huge difference because it doesn't matter how many Grammys you get. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. It's awesome. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. But, I, I want it, you know. Hey, come on, at shoot. The, at the end of the day, though, when you go to sleep, 
can you truly go to sleep knowing that you're being affected? Not man, yeah, I know. You know, it's and this is what I've always said. You know, and, and I will continue to say it throughout my career, throughout my life, throughout my career in ministry, and that's I want to be for somebody the person that I never had for me. <laughs> and a lot of that can go a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. It can be, you know, a mentor. It can be a minister. It can be, you know, the artist that is sharing my journey and, and showing you, like, if I can do it, you can do it, you know. And, um, but at the end of the day, if, if I if I don't have God, if I don't have Jesus, then um, what do I have? You know, I mean, mm-hmm. yes, this is my job. This is what I do. Fame all the notoriety, all the following will happen. It'll fade out, though. It'll fade out, but it'll happen. It'll come Mm -hmm. if I'm pursuing the right thing. Oh, yeah. You know, and, but my pursuit can't be just the fame. My pursuit can't just be, oh, I need to get following. I need to get fans. I need to get people, supporters. Mm -hmm. That's just going to happen. That's going to be part of the process. And if something truly is real happening with me and, and God and things are actually happening, People are going to notice that, you know, yeah. and and again, the pursuit is the audience of one. If God's not looking back at me when I'm looking up at Him, we got an issue, you know. We got we got a problem, mm-hmm. and um, that's at the end of the day what the most important thing is. And since you touch you touch on following, you know, we live in a social media world. It's twenty four seven on our smartphone. Yeah, I hate it. I'm I'm on the borderline with you, man. I mean, the one thing I noticed, all right, one thing I noticed about social media, it really has made an attitude towards people as far as I must be seen. Yeah, and you know, it's also um, kind of painted this picture. No, not you know, no pun intended, but um, it's painted this picture of kind of showing the world who you are the best of who you are but it's not really you mm-hmm. you know what i mean like that's you don't really look like that like girl, <laughs> girls be over there like trying to stretch their neck out four more inches and she's like you know your neck's not that long girl like you better stop or you know you, stuff you get, like you that get your best outfit and, and right. do a photo shoot. yeah hey that's, right. that's right. today's world right. <laughs> but in, into that point though what, what, I'm, what i'm trying to say in that point with social media is a lot of times we miss out on creating moments in real life. Oh, absolutely. I remember back yeah. in the day, I'm not that old yet, but I remember Man. when I was growing up, best thing was playing basketball outside in the backyard. In the backyard. You know, with friends and family. Falling you know? down on that asphalt and getting that little rock in your knee, <laughs> you, you know? know? You yeah. know that when you fall down and that little rock, that little, and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I'm done, guys, for the day. I mean, speed up today. I'm not knocking it. I'm, I'm going to make that super clear. I'm not knocking social media, but today is like if you're out playing basketball, it's like ten people. Oh yeah, yeah. Snapchat. Well, because you know, I mean, yeah, <laughs> right, sna- dinner, right, right, you're right. Eating dinner, but it's like uh, Facebook. And I'm all about. It's all good. I'm all, speaking of that. Um, we we definitely need to touch on this because I don't know if we, you saw, but I have a reality show now. Did okay. you see that? I didn't see that. Yeah. See that. So um, Man. we'll have to talk about okay. that. Yeah, but. Um, you know, social media is it's a great tool. Oh, it's a great tool. It's I'm a great balanced. asset. However, if you are going to abuse that tool or abuse that <laughs> asset, um, yeah, you're going to m- miss out on a lot of you know real life things that you know you could be really enjoying. You know, time with your family or you know time with your you know your boy and hanging out, and it's just kind of like um, if you're, you're you have your face in your phone the whole time. You know, it it can become an issue, and but guys like you and I, you know, dudes that are you know artists, and you know, you have a show, you have this, you kind of have to always be in social media. Yeah, um, you just don't want your whole life to be social media. Yeah, right. You don't want to be the social media. Yeah, because <laughs> like it's a big difference when you're promoting yourself and promoting your services. Right. Brand, yep. Going on tour. But it's another thing when you're eating a sandwich and like, hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, what's up? Look at this lettuce. <laughs> Look you know, at these jalapenos. I want to talk about this ham right now. <laughs> to me, 
like I said, I'm not knocking social media, but it's 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 a balance on how you use it to effectively get you to where you're trying to be yeah. as a brand. Now, if you want to eat donuts all day and you know put on your time feed, that's well, cool. That's cool. There's no wrong with that. If you got that kind of time, <laughs> go on, Mister Donut. <laughs> <laughs> you should open up a business, right? Right. Donut I'm shop. Him, I'm going to call him Mr. Donut. <laughs> Mr. Period Donut. But since we're on this topic of social media, yeah. what's some right ways and wrong ways for a music artist to put themselves out? D- uh, listen, so I'm going I'm to talk about this for a second because I cannot stand when uh, an artist gives too much access to their life. And the reason why I say that is if you're going to post something, post something that's good quality. Mm. Like, don't be posting stuff that looks like a cloud because mm. you, it's out, mm. your picture is out of focus, okay? Mm. Get someone around you that's going to tell you that picture is disgusting and don't post that. Get some real people. If you're building yeah. a brand, you know what I mean? Like, if you're building a brand, um, it's taken me, you know, four years mm. to basically have a solid presentable brand of yeah. who Brandon Watson is. And the reason why is anything that of worth, um, you know, worth sustaining is going to take effort. And, yeah, I've been guilty of posting really bad pictures. But someone's told me, like, Mm -hmm. hey, take that down. And I'm grateful for that, you know. So that would be a wrong way. The right way, you know, do the best you can. You know, put out quality, put out out excellence and... um, you know, put something inspirational with it. Put something faith based with it. Mm-hmm. Or you know, if you're having a bad day, be you. Be I'm you. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be <laughs> you. You know, if you're having a bad day, show that you're having a bad day. But then at the end of that quote, point to God is the answer. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. stop making it about you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what social media is. It's yeah. all about self. It's all about me, 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 me. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to do. You know, and, and I mean, it's cool. Okay. You know, I mean, we need it. You know, it, like I said, I love I love it, but I hate it. I hate having to do it. Yeah. Um, I wish I just had somebody following me all all the time. Just, hey, you, you, do, you do it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> have an assistant post on me. It's just too much for me, man. It exhausts me, <laughs> you know? Cause it, it really does. Like, social media, I've been learning a lot personally myself. Right. And one thing I know for sure is going back to just being you. You know, you. the best be the thing difference. you can ever be is you. Because the moment you try to pose like somebody else... Or dress like somebody else. Right, right. Or yeah. do a video and sound like somebody else. People see right through that. Right. And for those who might be frustrated, like, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to push my music, I'm trying yeah. to push my, my my business services. Right. But I'm not getting the response. Well one thing I'm learning is number one, you gotta help other like minded people mm-hmm. around you. Right. Because yeah. you you're not an island. Not you know, the only way you can be really successful is if you help other people attain success, too. Because the secret sauce is there's no secret. Everyone has 24 hours. That's How you true. use your time is what's going to tell the difference. And back to what you were saying earlier in the show, the capital P, practice. Practice, man. You got to practice your craft. You got to practice everything that's going to build you to go to the next level. Right. And speaking of going to the next level, what would be the next level for Brandon Watson? Yeah, so, um, go, you know, going into the social media thing and being you, um, the reason why I titled this project that's dropping next Tuesday, The Difference, the Lord, this was crazy. I was about to perform for 30,000 people last summer, and I was on stage, I was allotted eight minutes, and as soon as I stepped out on stage, I had been watching. There was about probably like seven or ten artists, all big name gospel artists. If I started going down the list, you would know exactly every single person. Um, but it was just all like a, it was just, it wasn't at all giving glory to God. <laughs> like at all. It was just kind of like, and it wasn't even a good show either. Like it was kind of just like, okay, what are we doing right now? And um, I was on the East Coast in Atlanta, and right before I took the stage, the Lord just dropped in my, my heart, just, you know, that subtle thing, and then you know it's God, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he just said, you know, you're different, be different. 
And I was like, whoa, that almost took me, like, <laughs> off because I was like, now i got to go sing and do this mm-hmm. thing. And so that stuck with me all through summer last year. And when I had to title this project Be Different or The Difference, mm-hmm. um, I was like, yeah, that's exactly what we need to be is be who we are. Be the difference. Be who God has called us to be as Christians. And that is be the light to this world, to be salt to this world. And and to be the difference because we are called to be different and um, you know that's that's basically what what the struggle is right now is showing who you truly are and worshiping in spirit and in truth and and being the difference and so um, you know for me you know going to the next level um, you know even practically I, I and I kind of talked about you know I have a reality show now which that was crazy. Um, mm-hmm. I have three seasons that I'm filming for. Nice. And it's called uh, Brandon Watson Journey to the Road. And so basically everything that's taking place is um, me as a worship leader, me as an artist, and me as a son, um, me as a friend. Like that's basically the, the whole shooting format is just me who I really am mm-hmm. and capturing who I really am and capturing how hard the journey is. And, um, you know, my, my, my faith, you know, my, my, uh, my career, my ministry and all of it. And I'm glad I'm giving the public access to see that because a lot of the questions that artists are asked or, you know, people are asked and, you know, sitting in my seat, um, it's because we ha- we don't want to show access, you know, to, to that. Um, to the hard parts, yeah. <laughs> you oh, know yeah. what I mean. Um, we never post our bad days. But there's no yeah. there, with this show. It's like there's there's no getting around any of that um, because it's going to be all out there, and um, I'm excited about it. You know, it's going to be done really well, and um, it's I, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty hot, man. Um, it's it's released into um, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick. Nice. Um, it's released into the Roku TV, so the app is actually built into to those TVs. And then um, it's going to release to the Now Network, a, a huge TV network in Dallas. Um, so it's, it's yeah, it's um, releasing next month in April. And so I think the trailer is going to be dropping um, in a couple weeks, so keep an eye out for that. And people who listen to this, maybe as a music artist or a musician, Say they're like, man, that's that's crazy, Brandon. Like, good for you, whoop de doo. But, right, you right. know, I'm still stuck. Get in your Dr. Phil moment and uh, tell him what's, what's going on. Yeah, so you're still stuck because either one, you're not allowing people to help you, mm. or you are allowing people to help you and you're still complaining that you're stuck. Um, the only way you're going to get unstuck is realizing what you're doing is a cycle Mm. and either it's keeping you from moving forward or um you just have to keep on pressing through until it happens you know the time will come when this thing will happen and um again you have to get people around you that are willing to help you or they're willing to buy into your vision but it's on you to keep the vision clear that's good you have to keep the vision clear. You can't wear everybody's glasses. You can't wear everybody's glasses. And you got to know what your vision is. Like, what is it that you want to do? What is it that, what's your, what's your set goals? Set small goals, mm-hmm. you know? Um, eventually, I was just out of service and the guy was like, you know, I'm going to do 100 push-ups a day. He never started with 100 push-ups. <laughs> he started with one push-up. And so, he literally started doing one push-up a day. And he's like, if I can do one I met a goal. I met a small goal. Mm-hmm. And eventually I'm going to do 100. I mean, now he knocks out like 200 a day. Yeah. It's like ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And wow. so, um, you know, set small goals, meet the small goal, and then you feel accomplished. And then you can move on to bigger goals. And, um, you know, if you feel stuck, get a team around you that, that buys into your vision, that helps you get to the next level and, and keep the vision clear. And get around healthy people. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you know, there's Go nothing. Preach on that. <laughs> there's there's nothing that's gonna diminish your dream faster than negative people. Mm, you well. know, because 
when you have too many negative people around you that keep saying, oh, you can't do it. I didn't do it. So what makes you think you can do it? <laughs> you know, that's the fastest way to be depressed and not be able to live to your fullest potential. You need a mentor. You need a mentor, And you need yeah. people who are trying to do better in their own life. Yeah. Because now you got a group of people that can keep you accountable so you're not falling backwards on progress. Right. Because back to success. Success is not about... I got a billion dollars. I got a million dollars. I have a mansion. I have this. I have that. Success is you living your purpose. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, that's what it is. When you live your purpose, that's when your passion starts to ignite. Right, right. But if you're trying to be like everybody else on well, TV. You can't. You can't, you can't do that. You got to be different. You got to be in your lane. <laughs> you and you got to be, be happy different. for what you have on your plate. Right. Because that's the only way God can actually grow your gift. Because if you don't appreciate your gift, then how can you use you? Come on, gift. Man. You know? Man, you've been all day. I'm, if I had a mic in my hand, I just I wouldn't even drop it. I'd throw it down. Shoot. But, no, people need to hear this because when you first were on the show, you're kind of warming up, you know? Right. But now you're, it don't matter if you don't have a label. You're going to be at the Stellar Awards. You right, know, you're right, on satellite right. radio. You have a rally show. That took a choice. Right. Just yeah. as the same, if you weren't doing all these things, yeah, it's still a choice. It's still a choice, man. You still have a choice to get up and say, I'm still singing, I'm still playing the guitar, I'm still going to serve at the church, I'm still going to hang out with friends. Because, you know, a lot of times when you get with too many negative folk, they make you start being negative about every single situation. Yeah, man. And you never look for the good things in life. It could be sunshine outside, and you'd be like, oh, it's too hot. <laughs> it could be raining outside. It's 50 degrees outside. Yeah, it could be raining outside, and we all know in Texas we do need the rain. Oh, man. And you'd be like, oh, man, it's always wet. You know, you can't be that person. And if you are that person, you got to snap out of it. Because that's the only way you start seeing things in your life begin to change. Yeah. Because it's... I'm going to quote Michael Jackson. It starts in the mirror, man. Ooh. You got to look in the mirror, man. <laughs> that man. But I didn't mean to take over that area of the, of the show, but I feel like a lot of people need to understand you're your biggest enemy. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody is holding you back. The system is not holding you back. You are holding yourself back. Yeah. If you want to be successful, just do it. Like yeah. Nike, I wish I had that slogan. Well, you, you know, know, Nike, they, they had a really nice slogan when they came with that. Just do it. You know what? You need to do, go. You need to make the slogan. You need to just say, we did it. Uh, I like that. No one got that done. I like, well, I'm, I'm going to let you have that. No, nah, I don't need that. to go ahead. It's yours, bro. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of all this, you know, we're not talking about, like, feel good, like, goosebumps. Like, this is real life. No, well, it's, yeah. You have to get up. <laughs> yeah. You got to be professional. You can't go to the event and not shave and not be presentable and not, you know, you know, warm up your voice. You can't be on stage with 30,000 people and you messing up your lyrics that you wrote oh, yourself. <laughs> and which I do that, you know. I mean, you know what I'm saying. It happens. Because what happens is, like, when you're not consistent practicing, like, you stay early in the show, you miss out on those bigger opportunities. Yeah. Because you can't start out with 30,000 people. Sometimes you're going to have to do like you did. You have to perform where it's only six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because really, yeah, if you can't, what well, the Bible say, you can't be faithful over a few. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I don't know if it said that. He ain't going to give you the many. <laughs> I think I flipped it. No, I think it's if you are he faithful over a few, I'll yeah. make you rule of many. Right. And that needs to be people's mindset. It's not the fact that you are a ruler, like a boss. Right, right. But it's more that you're a humble servant being Mm -hmm. able to have a big platform to help a lot of lives. Right. And that, I believe, is what you are doing. And a lot of artists out there are doing, and the ones who are not there yet, you gotta be patient. Mm -hmm. But while you're patient, you gotta keep working. Yeah. Because there's a difference. You can be patient but not be working. Right. And that's part of why you're not getting those phone calls. Hey, come on. It's part of why you're not getting those emails. Come on. It's part of why those sales are not going up. You <laughs> got to be consistent in what you say you're passionate about. Right. So. That's good, bro. I hate to take the mic, but, man. But you've been doing it all day. So, so <laughs> you know what? You take it, sir. If you got something to say. 
This is your show, not mine. But no, I feel like a lot of people, they, they need to understand that because a lot of times when we're looking at everybody's success in life, we automatically put ourselves as an outcast. Automatically. <coughs> Touch on that for just people individually. You know, it don't have to be an artist or an entrepreneur or nine to five. Maybe someone out there, they, they need that boost to wake up from that bad way of thinking and bad way of living. Yeah. Bad habits. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I already said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, King David was an outcast. He was overlooked. He was small. He was, he was scrawny. He was not chosen mm-hmm. at all. And he kept not getting chosen. And that's, that's what the, the, the funny thing is. But yet, his calling was mm-hmm. still to sit on the throne and to rule a nation. His calling was still to, th- you know, throw stones and slay a giant. His calling was still to, to be a warrior. His calling was still to be a worshiper and, and, and do it for, for an audience of one. And, but he still was going to sit on the throne and be a king. And that's what the thing is. If God has called you, if God has told you what you're going to do and have and you you are you know what you're going to become it's on you it's on me to continually uh, to to sit and 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 hone in on my craft and make my craft the best it can be practically and and work on my relationship with Jesus spiritually in this time and in this season because when the time comes when the call does come and the cells do go up that's not gonna. That's not gonna make who I am, mm-hmm. you know. So that that's basically. You'd be the same person. You just got the a lot same more person. sales. Yeah. And you got money now, you know. And more money, more problems. You got paying them taxes, man. Well, <laughs> well, it's that season too. <laughs> it is tax season. Oh, that's another. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm, I'm gonna stay focused. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go with that road. But man, because I think God got taxes too. But I'm not even gonna go that oh, direction. Oh. You know, oh wow! I'm not, that's another show. Yeah, you start yeah. something there. Right, right. But man, time goes so fast, man. Tell us more again. How if people are in the area of Stella Awards, where they can find you and where you be at? Yeah, man. I mean, I'll be I'll be out there next next Wednesday through Monday. Um, you can follow me on my website bwattsmusic.com or my social media at bwattsmusic, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It'll all lead you to the same place, and that's B Watts Music. And um, I'll be out in the Stellar Awards, Vegas. You know, we're going to be the light. We're going to be the difference. And uh, we'll be out there performing. And, hey, y'all pray for me. Pray that I win, you know, because yeah, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, you pray for everybody else to win, so was, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I need y'all to pray for me, yeah. specifically. I, you know, I, I need, <laughs> even if you got other artists out there, Brandon Watson's sitting here right now. So, <laughs> anyways, thank you guys you. so much we for having you. me. I appreciate it. Yes, sir, man. Once again, guys, this is Brandon Watson. Make sure you go out and support him, man. He's doing great stuff, and he's doing it with a good heart, and that's what it's all about. Before I close the uh, show, I want to definitely thank our sponsors, top of the list, always, every day, Mr. Rico Rodriguez, Rockefeller's Barbershop. You want to get the baddest, dopest haircuts in San Antonio, Texas, where you hear here locally or you fly in, you better stop by, man. You got to, man. Show support. And also, Miss Kim of River City Donuts and Bay Bay McClinton, All Sports Speed and Conditioning. Make sure you go to his website, allsportsfitness.net. And also, DW Brooks Funeral Home. Big shout out to them. And last but not least, uh, I'm a big supporter now of beyondbeanie.com. They sell beanies for men and women and bracelets. And every single item that they sell, 10% of it goes to children in need. So if you want to go there and shop, you can use a special code for 25% off. Just put READ, R-E-E-D, 25. That's READ, R-E-E-D, 25. And you'll be supporting a great cause. And before I close the show, I always say at the end, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. Peace.